Oh, got to get back to the day job, which is, I guess, trading content. We do we do have a nice segment here. I know I saw you took a peek at it. Um, a nice segment here on metals. We're going to look at buying metals futures and selling some options against it, which will be a really nice story, especially metals up here today, but definitely the laggard of almost all asset classes uh, amid this bounce here today that we're seeing and the last couple of weeks. And what do I mean by uh, a laggard here? Well, as I bring up our uh, crude oil market, you'll see what I'm talking about crude oil as we speak, Jamal ripping through recent highs. And I've got mm-hmm. here uh, the January futures. Uh, these expire here in at the small exchange this Friday. So if you uh, are in those jams, make sure you roll to the Febs, the G22s. But you can yep, see yep. here above 80 bucks in crude oil, Jamal. Holy hell. Yeah, no, I was looking at it earlier to rip through. I was actually um, short one at, uh, 80, 65 and, uh, yeah, rip through nice. today. I'm, I'm short the still in, the, and I'm still in the F 22. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, so just, you know, kind of watching it, keeping an eye on it. I actually, um, I'm, I'm curious about the next move where it's going. And I've been also looking, I'm actually, it's funny. <laughs> we were, we're, we're all, we're on the same wavelength. Cause I was looking at this, but I also been looking at some of what you said about metals recently and how the under well, metals have been kind of underperforming gold. And I know you're going to get to this in a little bit has been underperforming. One of the ones that I'm going to talk about later today is about the difference between that and copper. So I've been keeping an eye on metals, but back to oil, um, been watching the difference or sort of the uh, synergy between oil and dollar a little more recently, something interesting of note, but uh, yeah, no, oil has been ripping. Uh, uh, so many great points and uh, dang okay well we have to we ha- we, we you opened it up so we have to do it now uh which is go a little bit deeper here because there's actually so many different things to talk about one the synergy between dollars and crude you've got dollars down a quarter today crude oil up three bucks or so. Now, remember, this is a short, short, long, long pair. And what I mean by that is as the US dollar increases in value, theoretically, crude oil, which is priced in US dollars, should decrease in value. And so if you're selling crude and buying dollars, you're kind of on the same side of the trade, right? So you want to be, if you're doing anything in both of these markets, you want to be selling crude and selling dollars. That would be a hedge or buying crude and buying dollars given their inverse correlation. Now, what's interesting, Jamal, as I add a little bit more data here, um, let me get outside to the last year and I'll show you the continuous contract in the small dollar futures. Dollars are down the last couple of days here, but they're holding on to a good chunk of their highs. Their high was right above 151. They're just now getting down to 150 even uh, here, just about 10, 20 cents below that. And you've got, if I bring up the same continuous contract in crude. Hold on, I got to say something real quick. I I didn't know you could do that. The the dollar sign slash SMO. I usually just do like SMO uh, colon uh, um, SME, right? Is that kind of the same thing you're doing? Oh. There's a couple of different things. Yeah. To, uh, and I'm glad you bring this up because whenever people find out about this, they're like, oh, it's the same. Th- I didn't know I could do that. Um, so if you put a dollar sign in front of any future symbol, it's going to bring you the continuous contract, which just right. means it stitches together all of the futures contracts that have ex- expired to give you all of the futures data for the last whatever period. Now, if you go to uh, one of our indices like uh, FX colon SME. This is the index data, theoretically, which gives you, I mean, you look at it compared to the the continuous futures contract, the futures trade right on top of that index. And so it looks very similar. I would just tell people to kind of choose one and stick to it. There's, There's no real difference. I usually just like to live in the world of the futures. And so I'll throw the dollar sign in front of the future symbol, get me the historical, uh, the historical data via the continuous futures contract. Now. Nice. Okay. Sorry. You, Back to oil. No, all, all good. All good. Great asides here on Tuesday afternoon. What is interesting, and I didn't think about it this way because I'm just ready to get short crude into this up move uh, outside the standard deviation for the day. Check through the highs for the last couple of uh, weeks here. Check a lot of different reasons for me to want to get short crude, but I could append it with, I know we're off of the highs in dollar, but you're rarely going to get 
US dollar at all time highs and crude oil at all time highs. But to get them both within spitting distance of those highs is intriguing to me. I don't mind getting short this crude oil market and throwing on the hedge of short dollars. And if I do it one to one, I'm going to be under hedge that short dollar. And I'm still going to be the bulk of it is going to be my crude oil exposure. As you can see here, you know, for a $3 move in crude oil, uh, SFX has only moved 30 cents. So you would probably need a few of those SFX to wipe out the full exposure of your crude. But I don't mind a short, short in there. But um, if I am opening a short crude oil uh, contract, I probably should be doing so in the G22, uh, which is the expiration for uh, February, which is what we're rolling to. What do you think about that? I think that's a good hedge. It, it definitely makes sense. I mean, you, you hit on all the points um, because it's something that I just kind of noticed today. It, oil obviously has been making its move to the upside dollar. I feel like it hasn't been moving a whole lot, but it's still been sort of somewhat elevated um, comparatively. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of curious that there really hadn't been this this change in move and it just happened today, right? Like we just saw this dollar drop and we see oil going higher. Yeah, absolutely. And now here's one more thing that I did want to bring up in while we're in the crude oil world, and then we'll transition into metals here in a second, is now the small exchange only offers two contracts on their futures at a time. And that's going to be, you know, your active month and then your deferred month. We try to make it simple for people. So it's just like, you've got two contracts at any given time. You want to be in the active month, um, which now is transitioning from January to February for crude. And next week, it's going to transition for the other nine products. What's interesting though, crude oil is one of the only markets out there, Jamal, that calendars in futures are relevant. Now, we only have a couple of days left to trade this, but I do want to bring this up to people just to kind of get it in your minds and, and look at if you're looking for a short-term smaller scalp in crude oil, I think that there's an interesting opportunity in selling the Jans. And this is something you're going to have to take off in the next 24 to 48 hours because these futures are going to expire at the end of the week. But mm -hmm. selling these Jans that are up at 81.30 and buying the, uh, the, the deferred month here, the Febs, uh, at 80.60, and that is a stand-in. It's it's kind of you're getting theoretically short the crude oil market with that calendar uh, there, Jamal. But it's a smaller trade. You can see here if I was short the Jans and long the Febs going into today, you can see that the net change difference. I would be out twenty cents as opposed to you know two to three full dollars. And you can see Pete and I have looked at this in the past. Calendar spreads if you're short or long them. A lot of times in crude oil and in natural gas, the places that they're relevant, uh, they are kind of smaller stand-ins for uh, positions in the underlying market themselves. So you could get short the calendar here. If you're looking for something a little bit uh, interesting, you could go into the Paris Trader and get that done. You have uh, some questions on uh, the calendar spread or what? Uh, no, I don't. Makes sense, my friend. And I think people should remember in this situation, oil has been in backwardation for quite some time now um we've been seeing this this backwardation in oil where the front month's trading over a good bit so yeah absolutely sense. and so, and so this is an interesting one whereby i would uh and and yeah i know it's like well frank you just sold the g22s and sold us dollars this is kind of a different trade that we're looking at here that would be a shorter term uh just like if i were able to get this spread done here at 70 cents Let's say I'm uh, buying uh, the G22s, trading 70 cents under the F22s. I would be looking to take you know 20, 30 cents out of this today or tomorrow, uh, and not hold this through to expiration this weekend. But an interesting uh, little piece there um, to get uh, take a look at um, the calendar spread, which we didn't we don't do very often in small exchange products, just because uh, just because. We only have really two months in a lot of the products, but let's get into what we're supposed to talk about here because metals, a commodity in the same commodity space as crude oil, uh, Jamal, that are just, they're up today, but today is actually kind of a good example of the last several months 
where a lot of stuff trending higher, a lot of stuff correlated to metals moving higher, but metals just lagging everything else. I mean, you see a big update in crude, US dollar lower. You'd expect maybe metals to be ripping higher and they're just kind of barely off their lows. So let's take a look at buying futures and selling options. Uh, you interested in some long gold and silver today? Let's do it. Let's take a look. I know gold's up the last three days in a row. So a little bit of a bounce back from these lows. And yeah, I want to look particularly at gold and how it stacks up to the rest of the precious metals. But first, let's just look at the precious metals. And they find themselves in a situation that a lot of markets find themselves in, uh, Jamal, where they're like at their lows, but they've rallied a little bit uh, off of the lows. And um, they're not like... Uh, Everybody wants to buy the lowest print, right? It's like, oh, I want to get long from the cheapest price and I want to get short from the most expensive price. Rarely can we get those extremes. Usually the market will move through us or the market bounces back before we get our uh, what we want to get done, done. But we're within a dollar or so of these lows in metals going back to when uh, you probably remember when gold and silver got pounded uh, in the fall of 2021. Yeah. When was that? I forget the month already. Is that it? You got it right here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that's was, uh, right. Yeah, later on. Uh, oh, I already moved my cursor. Oops. Like <laughs> end, of, end, of September, end of September and uh, start of Oct yeah, October, October there. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people thinking that gold and silver are going to fall out of this recent range that they've been trading in. Uh, but it's held in pretty good. And and though we're not at the lows, Jamal, I mean, you see every time spree, which is gold, uh, silver, and platinum, you can see here the distribution, mostly gold, a good amount of silver, and then just a little platinum. Every time we've gotten down to the low 70s or the rare occurrence that they've broken below 70, they bounced off of it pretty good. A pretty good mean reversion trade in metals at the off these levels, right? Yeah. And, and that's kind of how it works with metals. I mean, there's a lot of times you can consider them almost like a sleeping giant, particularly gold. I mean, it can be quiet for a little bit. And then, you know, all of a sudden you get these, these nice pops like you saw last year, last year between, you know, April and May. And then of course, again, after that September bottom and then bounced again. So yeah, I mean, it, it's a good time to look at it when it's kind of quiet. Yeah, absolutely. And and to your point, it's it's not real metals isn't one that I necessarily like put in my portfolio for like, oh, I'm just gonna hold gold for like the next 10 years. It's more of like when it gets cheap, I'm looking at buying it. When it gets expensive, I'm looking at I mean, we were looking at selling gold and silver when remember gold got all the way up to twenty one hundred. Now it's back to eighteen hundred. It's it's kind of it's better for us short term traders. And today, you know, we're looking at the small metals futures that groups exposure to gold, silver, and platinum, and zeroing in on gold and silver, you can see it's been a better run for gold. Gold is actually kind of mid-range and silver is lower, which has moved this small metals uh, market down to its lows. And I think this presents an interesting concept whereby markets near the lows, Jamal, I want to get long it, but I'd really love to be long at the lows. Why don't we look at hedging part of that long futures position with some short options in the outperformer and essentially taking part of this gold exposure out of our trade. But that's been the, the most expensive piece. And we're kind of doubling down on getting long silver and platinum, the underperforming metals, while also getting us a, a short options position that'll work our break even down closer to the lows in the spree futures. That all making sense? That all is making sense, man. You are just on it. Let's go. <laughs> As we continue here, I want to compare the market that we're getting the long futures down in to the market that we're getting the short options down in. And you can see just on the face of it, friends, all of you out there who are looking to get long or short metals exposure, you really can't do better than the futures space and you can't do smaller then the small metals, which is a margin of just 650 bucks, gets you $7,000 worth of gold and silver. I know the CME has the micro gold, but that's a product that's about twice the size of this one. You've got the micro silver, again, a couple times the size of the small metals here. And you look at the gold ETF and you can get for 100 shares in GLD, 
uh, a little bit more than twice the notional exposure of precious metals, Jamal, but it's co- it's costing you more than 10 times to get that done. I mean, that does that math, math check out to you? I'm, I'm paying 10 times the amount to get just twice the exposure. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that doesn't look like a whole lot of fun either. I mean, you, you definitely would, would gear towards more looking at Spree. Yeah. And, and I understand a lot of people kind of get caught up in, uh, you know, futures uh, can be more risky and everything else. And yeah, absolutely. When you're using leverage like this, stuff can move faster than you anticipate. But if you're using small products and you're getting stuff done in sizes that you would have been comfortable in the ETF world, uh, you know, like maybe an option on GLD, which is 100 shares of this gold ETF, which is this size here, if you're comfortable with that size, you might as well go to the futures here and get it done for cheaper. Now we can still use though that GLD to hit them against each other here, take some of that outperformer, which is gold, out of the equation. And you can see here, you know, gold has been at certain points, the underperformer in this mess uh, being below the spree market. It kind of goes on both sides. And so I uh, definitely like looking at, you know, a, a basket of metals here and getting short the outperformer while getting long the rest of them, uh, especially here near the lows and selling that call spread in GLD. Uh, and I'm looking particularly, uh, I was yesterday at one long spree contract and a short 170, 175 GLD call spread. That'll get your break even down to where the lows have been in this market. And so I'm feeling better about my long metals position, even though we're not technically at those lowest of the low prices. Yeah. And that uh, 170, 170, uh, that 170 strike is probably was at the money that you were looking at yeah. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, this is a, a good trade overall, I would say. It helps you head some of your long spree exposure. We also, like you said, you pointed out the fact that GLD is 67% or you know, gold in general is 67% of the spree. So you can feel comfortable with that type of trade on. Yeah, absolutely. And as I bring it up here, you can see that the long futures contract is going to cost you about 650 bucks at Tastyworks. We get that done in here. And so now I'm long gold, silver, and platinum, and I'm long about $7,000 worth of it. I go over to GLD, and this is a bigger product, okay? Pound mm-hmm. for pound, it's about, you know, one spree contract would be about 50 or 40 shares of GLD or Delta's for those of you in the options world. And so with the movement higher here in metals in general, what I was looking at yesterday, which was slightly out of the money, is right now at the money here, but we're only short about 25 deltas. So we're still long metals. Okay. If metals move higher, theoretically, we're making money. But what's really nice is I got a buck 70 in credit and I can go over and see that a buck 70 in credit gets me long this metals market below 70, which has been the lows for the last, like we just looked at in that graphic, uh, it's bottomed out at you know $69, just below 70. And that short call spread gets us long from those low prices uh, here today, even with a slight bounce off the lows in uh, metals. And I think this all also pairs well in your portfolio with that short crude oil that we were looking at earlier as crude a fellow commodity moves through those highs. So a lot of synergy at play looking at options in the ETF space and uh, futures there uh, with metals being the spotlight for us uh, today. Go back to the spree chart again. Sure thing. And I, I mean, because you know people should understand the idea of, like you said, you're selling that for 170, so your max loss is 330, even if this is in your face, right? But um, looking at, uh, you know, that that spree chart, you're looking for a, a nice move off of, you know, where it is right now and, and seeing how far that can get you to go. Right. Like overall, look how. Yeah. Comparatively over the past year, look where it is. Right. It could certainly venture to 75 at some point. So especially the way metals move. I like yeah, the absolutely. The, the idea here is like as long as spree stays above 70 bucks, I'm making money um, because I, I'm only out 
you know, a hundred bucks or 120 or 130, 140 bucks. And I collected 170 bucks on my short call spread. And yeah, if the call spreads in my face, well, that means that my spree futures have moved higher uh, to the tune of, you know, a hundred dollars, $200, $300. And that call spread has a max loss of 300 bucks. And so it'd be a very particular situation whereby uh, the amount of, Actually, I, I don't think theoretically there's any situation where that short GLD call spread is uh, is in my face for down two hundred or three hundred bucks. Yeah, and the, or more yeah, than it's three. it's not over. The hedge isn't overwhelming the position, right? Yeah, correct. That's what I was. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get at for people to understand. Absolutely cool, awesome, man. I think that's a nice uh, idea, and that can be lent to anything. You know, the small exchange is adding options and it might be this product very, very soon here, everybody. Uh, but you know, there's you can do so much stuff with ETFs and futures and now small futures and micros from the CME. You have so many tools at your disposal to mix and match stuff and get uh, what you want done, get it done at better prices, get different payout structures. Profiting in different ways has never been easier. And I love to highlight ideas like this, but they can be lent to you know doing the same thing in interest rates and selling calls in uh, the the TBT ETF, you know, uh, buying S30Y and doing that there. Uh, so many different examples. The permutations are endless, but thank you for joining us, Jamal, for this one. I thought that was pretty nice. I thought it was too, man. You came full of ideas today, man. I like it. <laughs> yeah, like it. That's, what, that's what the people want, dude. I don't know. I've been doing, <laughs> it, it took me, it took me about six years to figure out that people really want statistically based trade ideas, dude. They want to make money with some edge in their favor. And that's what I try to bring the people every day. And you bring the people so many great ideas on engineering the trade. Everybody check that out on the Tasty Trade Network and also check out Jamal in general on Twitter and elsewhere. Anything else to, to plug? Thanks, my friend. No, not, nothing else to plug at all, man. Awesome. Yeah, I'm we'll out, get out of here. Yeah, you you ended up getting the one for your boy that's on that's on your shirt there, which was good. Well, you asked, yeah, that I mean, yes, I that mean. was a that was a one of the. Have have you and your kids ever watched Bob's Burgers? No, I know the show though. No, I don't. <laughs> no. First of all, it's it's fantastic, but there's a great scene. I'm pretty sure I've brought it up on this show before. Uh, but like the 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 kid, the young son, who probably is around like. Uh, nine, eight, nine, ten years old. He gets pulled in at a baseball game to be one of the people who run the bases in like the seventh inning stretch, a uh, little game or whatever. And uh, the guy who's announcing it's like, oh, like what, like what, what does your family do? And he's like, oh, we own a burger joint. And he's like, what's the name of it? And you know, there's everybody in the stands, and he's going to get free publicity. And the kid's like. I forgot. I, I don't know. And the dad's in the crowd, like, oh my God, like remember the name. And so I, I thought that was, that was funny where it's like, yeah, shout out this dude. I forget his company, but we got it done. Uh, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. We're going to get to splash into futures coming up next. Plenty of trade ideas coming at you. So stick around. Thanks for watching uh, small stakes. Peace. Later.